All right, this is block five, uh, the Roaring Twenties, section three, Changing Society, and the section beginning with um, the Wright brothers. Here are the Wright brothers. They are almost your beautiful, typical American inventor story. Uh, they were born in Dayton, Ohio. They were bicycle mechanics. Uh, and they tinkered with bicycles and then machines for a long time. And they got it in their head when they were kids uh, that they wanted to fly like birds one day. Um, and they worked at it. And um, by 1903, had designed uh, what they called the Wright Flyer. This was the first heavier than air airplane that allowed people to fly up in the air. And they built this pretty much um, out in the garage behind their house, um, you know, where they had their bicycle repair shop. Um, and they had lots of new inventions and, you know, motors and, you know, all the different ways to design the wing and to control the thing. And then in December of 1903, here they are, this is an actual photograph of the first ever airplane flight. Uh, that's Oroville right on the plane, his brother Wilbur watching. And they launched this right flyer down a ramp and up into the air, and it flew by itself under its own heavier than air power for exactly 12 seconds and went about 103 feet. Uh, and then it landed back on the sand, and then they did it again. Uh, and they became the first people in the history of the world to fly on an airplane. The technology took off incredibly quickly, uh, you know, from this obviously very basic design. And pilots and aviators became huge celebrities. You know, people from all over the world are trying to build their own airplanes and improve how to do it and improve the technology and improve the design. Only 20 some odd years after the Wright brothers flew their first plane, uh, this is Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh became an international hero uh, by becoming the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. And this is his plane, uh, the Spirit of St. Louis. Um, and St. Louis is the point, and why it's called the Spirit of St. Louis, St. Louis is the point where all of those westward pioneers left from. Um, and so the Spirit of St. Louis is the spirit of pioneering, the spirit of exploration. Charles Lindbergh took off from New York, uh, flew uh, across the Atlantic Ocean by himself, took about 27 hours, um, and then he landed with his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis, in Paris, and he became the hottest thing in the world. You can tell from this picture. Look at this picture. Look at these people crowding around his plane uh, after it landed, you know, on the airfield outside of Paris. He was hot stuff. Airplanes are going to revolutionize transportation. They're going to revolutionize warfare. Uh, and the people who flew them became huge international celebrities. Lindbergh being one, and Amelia Earhart being another. She was the first female pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Here she is with uh, her Electra, in which she um, she disappeared, attempting to become the first female to ever fly completely around the world. Um, it's new. It's modern, like the rest of the 1920s to America. Men have conquered the air. Men are as birds. Um, and it's going to change lots of things. Communication, warfare, transportation, um, celebrity. You know, who's Charles Lindbergh? You know, we, we, and you know, later on in the 1960s, you know, we're going to idolize our astronauts uh, in the same way that in the 1920s, we idolized our pilots. Um, and this celebrity culture is becoming a part of America. In the 1920s, we begin to fall in love with celebrities. Uh, and obviously, this is a love affair that continues. Charles Lindbergh is definitely among them. 